Live with the Opie and Anthony Show. Rick James in the house. <laughs> yeah. Building security is up here. Everyone is excited to, to meet Rick James today. I want to meet him. Let's bring him in. A couple phone numbers in the New York area. 877-692-1027. Anywhere else, 866-2774-WOW. That's 866-277-4WOW. Oh, yeah, that tune. <laughs> Playing in the background. He's probably rolling his eyes right now, like, oh, jeez, yeah, right. you know how much other stuff I've done? <laughs> right. And this is like the tune that uh, everyone knows you for. It's a shame. Yeah. yeah. How you doing, Rick? Good, man. Yeah? Good, buzzing. Doing all right? Keeping busy? Pumped up, man. Like, yeah? Excited to be back in New York. Very cool. Yeah. You know something? Uh,. I've been fascinated with the life of Rick James. I got to tell you, oh, don't not, me ma not many people. <laughs> Rick, you got to be. I mean, please, not many people have uh, gone through so many things in their life uh, as you. Well, you know, so hopefully they don't. Well, yeah. Well, some of the stuff is great. I mean, I love the whole thing when, uh, especially when that song was popular. You know, when I could see you were you were knocking them down left and right. You know, a lot of a lot of girls, hot chicks of the day, just uh, clamoring over you. Yeah. And uh, you were yeah. living the life. Yeah. And uh, then all of a sudden, the high life. all of a sudden, all of a sudden, uh, this story comes out behind the music. Yeah. This story comes out that yeah. uh, here's a guy that's getting chicks all over the place. Then the story comes out that have to force the shit to happen. Right. And I'm like, now this come ain't on, think about that. I want you, to, I want you to think about that one. Exactly. It's like, why would Rick James, who is getting chicks left and right, then have to uh, force someone who loves drugs to do drugs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Something is not wrong with this picture. Though. Exactly. It seemed yeah. a little off. Well, right. see, that's you know that's one of the things behind the music failed to mention. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I was pleased with behind the music. Uh, you other, what? Than, other than the fact I was pleased with it. Yeah. Other than the fact that uh, a lot of the stuff that went on uh, that was sealed by the judge, uh, the DA didn't end. Of uh, the DAs are bribing uh, witnesses and giving witnesses drugs and TV really? and things to allow. Yeah, a lot of stuff went on. It did. Yeah, and uh, I mean, anyone in their right mind knows. Yeah, I really, yeah, I really have to force a woman to have sex. Yeah, I really have to do that <laughs> for some reason. And I really, it, and I boy. really have to force them to 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 to. to uh, I really have to force girls who've been kicked out of uh, uh, states because of their drug addiction to do drugs. It seemed to me like I, yeah, I have it was to do just, that. It, it was people. Days. It seemed to me like it was just a group of people that enjoyed doing some drugs and uh, having some sex, got together, and all of a sudden she uh, freaked well, out? Well, no, what it was was she came to my house. Uh, <clears throat> she came to my house with, with this other girl, 6 in the morning. I, I guess she told the jury she came to a cocktail party. Yeah, I always have them at 5 in the morning. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> <laughs> and we and we and we were you know we we were hitting it we were we were on the floor in the classes somewhere in the, in the first half an hour anyway she stayed for like a month and a half a month and a half <laughs> and I, <laughs> I, I guess she, had, ass I guess when she finally went back to her party yeah, she yeah. finally went back to her pit for her man mm -hmm. he was a little pissed off and uh, and she, she came out with the story her. yeah and. Uh, they just said, you know, it was much more to that. I mean, I got a book coming out called Confessions of a Super Freak One. We're going to expose a lot of the stuff uh, that the judge hit and um, a lot of that stuff. There were, there were a lot of stories of, uh, like, torture, though. That yeah, were, yeah, were right. I'm Marky Desai, right? I told you everyone. <laughs> sure. Let me just believe that it's true because you're my idol. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let me just believe it. <laughs> Sorry. You know, I, was, I, I love the concepts, you know. I mean, yeah. uh, Marky Desai, one of my favorite characters in life. The image of Bugs Bunny. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, every woman I, I think I've ever had sex with, I think I've tortured, maimed, cut, stabbed. Yeah, and, the, yeah. the images that it kind of. That's why there were so many lined up around the courthouse. And, uh,. Right. Rick James just going uh, nuts and, and uh, uh, torturing a woman. The images it kind of oh, yeah. was like, wow. Oh, I know, have to torture What the me. hell is going on I with this Look, before we make love, they have to get tired of being tortured and stabbed. <laughs> and forced. Yeah, I, now, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that yeah. sounds like Norton's face. Yes. Uh, you know, I, 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 don't nice spank, I don't spank butts. I, I just, I, I, I brand them. <laughs> is that it? So there was no torturing? Uh, sorry for all of you SSM freaks who lined up there with your whips and chains. No, huh? I'm sorry. Now they the, go see Prince. For some reason, the jury didn't buy this. No, they didn't. And they sent you away. 
Well, really. Now, you were doing, at the time, you were into uh, doing well, crack? Is that what? No, no, I'm not. No, see, that's another That's another thing. thing. I, I, you know, I really, I, I hate to say it. Don't do crack and then like crack. I free base. Ah, okay. You know something? A lot of people that free base the coke don't like when it's called uh, doing crack. No, no, they don't. It's, it's, it's much more free base and cocaine. A lot more civilized. It's than doing so politically crack. correct to say free base. <laughs> it sounds cooler. Um, it sounds cool. It's a lot more. Uh, it's sure. I'm it's free basing. Right. It, so for those out there who think crack and free base are the same, um, no. you're a fool. No, yeah, no, right. No, no, no. Yeah, that's why they cost the same. That's why you can buy crack for ten dollars and. Free base, very yeah. refined. You go out, you get your ether, ammonia, you mix it up. See, there you go, going back to the old days. Back back to the old reliving, days. reliving those times, reliving those old times. Rick, I gotta say, I partook in a little free base cocaine myself. Hey, I back partook in, the 80s. in a lot of free base. Cocaine. And I'll tell you one thing. Uh, <laughs> you hear about it, it? It did make you feel good, <laughs> but it didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as soon as you did it, you wanted to burn and torture someone, didn't you? Well, yes, I did, and I captured a lot of uh, people and uh, <laughs> and tortured <laughs> them, and, and they're still up. in his basement. Did you ever get high with uh, <laughs> your party with Richard Pryor? Did you ever get high with Pryor? No. As a matter of fact, uh, when I sang with Richard and he used to do that drug, um, I, uh, that's what made me not want to do it. Yeah. See, for a long time, I was totally against it. I mean, we used to start talking in the 80s all the time. Who didn't, Rick? And uh, at every session, every time we recorded, you know, it was like it was like the end thing to do. You hang out in Studio 54 and, you know, we'll play them and you go to Paris, wherever you go, and you smoke the thing. But I used, watch, their I used to watch people really change. And Richard was one of them, man. Richard used to get really weird off off Freemason, and, and girls would like take out all these bottles and and and, and baking soda and ether and all this stuff, and I never understood that. So for you know a long time, I was down on that. Yeah, I I really cursed the day that I started. I, I went from spending like who showed you uh the the Freemason? Who showed well, you? Well, what happened was I went I was starting and I was spending like I don't know two hundred some thousand dollars a year and then some hose and writing on Jose Coco. <laughs> Some strange thing. Well, right on, right. right. And, and then, and then, during the street songs, so we went to Chicago. And I don't want to name the organization, but, you know, they were a political organization. Mm -hmm. And the guy came in and he had this big, uh, case. And it opened up like four ways, right? And, and he, he, these pipes and all this stuff. <laughs> like and, 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 he said, and he says, uh, I'm going to say, I'm gonna give you, have, you, have you ever done this? And I said, no. And then he closed the case back up. So what are you doing? He said, well, I'm, I'm not going to be the first one to turn you on. Ah. I said, I was just kidding. I was just kidding. I've done that before. I've done it before. I was just right. kidding. Right. And he opened it back up, and I had my, uh, one of my security guards about six foot six. And he said he had tried it. He lied to. And uh, so he made himself up, and he, and he took a hit of it, and he fell flat on his back. Yeah. And I said, I got to have that. <laughs> Wow. Everyone remembers that first big uh, puff of uh, free base smoke. And I never quite got out of it, but I, I, I did hire someone to go on the road and cook it up for me. Yeah. And they, all these groups used to steal him because he would cook so good. He was the good guy. Why are you making me remind you of all these all <laughs> guys? Because it's interesting. Wait, so, Man. so there was just a guy that followed you on towards, and that was his And he and cooked. His own yes, job. yes, yes. And, 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 and his job was to cook. My now, crew told us that they had a drug deal that would just. Matter of fact, he was so good. He was so good at cook. He would cook up the coconut, and the water would be invisible. And he would go in the room and bring back another rock. Oh, How about that? He was very good. What, he used the uh, eyedropper and no, man, his no, stuff no, out, no, put he, it on a slate or something? He was just, he, he was just a really good cook yeah. and thief. And he was just, <laughs> uh, go ahead, he was just... He's just a really good cook. And all of these rock and roll groups and people used to steal them. Didn't you realize, Rick, after the first hit, you'd never get quite as good a we, buzz the, I, the I whole could, rest of the night? You know what? I couldn't understand the high. You know, it, it was like, it was like, when I, when I first, when I, when I first rebased, I didn't understand that high. No? It took me three, four, five times to really get it. And once I understand. No, 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 really. I gotta get a grasp on No, no, really. Cause when, you, Cause when you snort it, I mean, bam, you know what it's like, okay? But when you but when you start smoking and you don't understand something, you're trying to say, well, what is the big deal? Yeah. yeah. And then next thing you spend five six thousand dollars a week on the big deal. <laughs> and then you wonder, <laughs> then you know what the big deal is. Yeah, yeah right. It's called addiction. Oh, serious addiction. Wow. So but, you were going through a lot of cash. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Went through, yeah. Kind of got you into uh, a little bit of trouble, I guess. Well, you know, well that that happened really. The all the trouble was it came forth. Like my mother was. Uh, I was out in California and I brought this house. And Mickey Rooney's there, and uh, um, 
this beautiful place. As a matter of fact, I was just like, it took me like four months to realize I had this beautiful rose garden on the side of the house. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking my, but my, you know, my mother was dying of cancer at the time, and I really didn't care about living and dying, so I brought a lot of degradating people around me, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't really care about who hung around, you know. And it was mostly you know, a lot of women, and there's a lot of degradation, you know. Well, self destruction yeah, 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 and it was, you know, I didn't care. So I brought a lot of people around that, you know, I was, I was uh, cruising for bruising, you know. Yeah. I was headed straight forward. I didn't really care. So when all of that went down, it really saved my life. I mean, uh, you know, because really it was uh, it, it was a curse turning to a blessing. Because well, sometimes stuff like that happens and you end up dead instead of. Uh, I mean, the judge, the judge wanted to, you know, the judge wanted to give me like three lifetimes, and I was like getting high every day and snoring and going to sleep in the corner. Three lifetimes? How do you do three lifetimes? <laughs> Will you like die and come back and do like, another lifetime? If you were able to come back, you would have to go back to prison. Yeah, he was calling me all, all these names, Charles Manson, and on either side. And how much? Like, how much time did you get? Well, really, what I got was, I got five years, but it was suspended into like. It, Eight months at a drug thing, mm -hmm. but when I went to the drug prison, uh, I didn't know that the uh, the uh, the head of the prison was allowed to exclude you if you had violence, you know. And mm. there was violence on my record, you know. And um, so she excluded me, which means she put me out of that. And I, I'm kind of glad because I, I, had I done that eight months, I would have been on parole probably for the, for the rest of my life down there. Yeah. So she said, so I went to, uh, she excluded me and I induced to five years. And I did close to three years at Folsom Prison. Three years which at was Folsom Prison. Which was fantastic. Believe it or not. Really? Yeah. What's the experience? I, I just want to hear what your experience was in, uh, in prison. Well, what? Got them Oz. I don't want to Oz. I mean, Oz is kidding, guys, man. Oz is Oz. Oz. Oz is kindergarten, man. Oz is kindergarten. What does Rick James think now when you 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 brought into Folsom? Now well, here well, you were, well, a guy that had a hell of a friggin' career. Right, going. I was the last one, and and I was the last one off this bus, right? And all these guys are shackled, being dropped off in prison, and I'm the la I got this little bag, and 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 the cop tells me he realizes I'm Rick James. He says. Wow, if I knew it was you, I would have gave you an extra bologna sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, you know, thanks a lot. Yeah, and I get off the needed. bus, and these 4,000 guys are in this yard. And all of them stop and come over to the fence. Uh-oh. And start yelling, yeah, Rick, Mary James, Rick, Rick, Mary James girls, come to my cell, rah, rah, rah. I said, uh-oh, uh -oh. Like, Who do I hook up with? Who, what's really going on? But you know what? It was an experience because um, I grew up. Uh, I got a chance to kick kick the drug. Um, I got I wrote close to three hundred songs when I was there. Uh, I, I always said to myself, I needed like two or three years to clean out. You know, mm -hmm. and I could have gotten high in prison. I mean, there's there's plenty of drugs in prison. Uh, but like, you really want to get high with a bunch of dudes around, right? I'm used to getting high with four or five women, drinking crystal in the sauna, laying in the pool, butt uh, naked. That's the that's the <laughs> thing. You're going from that to now you're you know the, those bars slide yeah, down. Yeah, Bubba and everybody next door. Yeah. You know what but was I, going through your mind? Did you go like, oh my God, no, where I just, the hell did I f up? You know what? It took me, I had uh, it took me a while to sober up, really. And by that time, I was like on my way to Folsom. I mean, I no, I had gotten out of the CRC. Uh, which was at narcotics prison, and I was on the way to Folsom, and uh, reality set in because Folsom is like a a Bastille, or it looks like an old castle. That's a very and famous prison. They sent me to yeah, they sent me to the very worst. Well, let's send uh, let's send to the worst place we can, the best school in the world, and, uh, and uh, Folsom was it. But uh, I, and the seals were all rednecks. I mean, they were all guys. right. Yeah. They have lots where I would survive, and I don't know who would be the first one to shoot me, who would be the first one to beat me down, who would be the first one to lock me in a hole, who would be the first one to write me Now, down. what, did did anything uh, happen? Any stories of, uh... No, man, because those cats looked after me, man, and gave me more love, even, I mean, even the Aryan race. I mean, even... Really? Even guys in the Aryan race, because, they, uh, and a lot of lifers, uh, because had I went in there a punk, or had I went in there stuck up, or had I went in there acting better... I probably would have been there, as you know, but I wouldn't. I mean, I'm, I'm me. I'm what I am. Mm -hmm. I'm Rick. I'm Rick. And most of them had lived, uh, like I met guys who have been in there 20 years, 23, 24, 25 years, man, and they had uh, pretty much grown up to me. Right. On my music. 
Well, there were White Chicano, Eminem's, BGF, 411, Crips, Bloods, Mexican Mafia. It didn't really matter. Bringing them all together through Rick James music. No, man, they had, they had, yeah, they were in love with the Mary Jane girls, and they, they would ask me questions, you know, and I worked in the library, and, you know, put a lot of them down on reading and writing, and, and uh, it became an experience, man. It became, uh, it became a really nice experience. What did you, you do to uh, satisfy yourself? You make up one of those uh, washcloths with the glove in there, and the, we heard about that. What's it called? Man, I, you know black people don't do that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? What was it called, we Rick? Do you remember? I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Homemade no, no, what is it? You see, you see they have a good grip on it. What is it? I don't know, <laughs> it was what, that thing, I don't know what that thing is. Rick, you, you take a washcloth and you wrap it up real tight. No, man. I, 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 I didn't have to go through that. All I had to do was call a certain lieutenant or a certain size of females, and they would come. Oh, yes, sir. Three o'clock. Were you banging in prison? Unlock the cell and take you God damn, Rick James. Room. Wait, tell me, you were getting banged in prison? I got what I wanted to do. <laughs> That's right. I'm with Jay. What do you think I'm just going to lay there and I got these five females, security guys walking around talking about, ooh, I just love Mary Jane. Ooh. Hey, did they bend over on the other side of the bars they for you? No, they open the bars up and then they bend over. I think yeah. it's more erotic if, if you do it through the bars. Well, so, well, Frank, well, you want a little piece I, I, of this? I had a cellmate. We had to kind of keep it cool. Yeah. So you're, you're, but no, I mean, honestly. What did your was, cellmate do while you were getting banged? He, he wasn't around. They'd say they would open up the cell and they would tell me to come to a room. And oh, so it's like you're going on official business somewhere, yeah, you know, get yeah, a yeah, little meeting. Exactly. And then the room would come yeah, up and uh, yeah. go drink some wine and have some steak, and, <laughs> you know, <laughs> eat a few, eat a few other get things. Get some. Yeah, get a little bit. God damn, Rick charge James. For sex? Huh? Were they charged for the sex? No charge. Charge. It's Rick James. It's Rick James. Yeah, charge. They're just uh, doing it to get some of the Rick James. No, what it was was there were there were a lot of uh, Fulton had a lot of like uh, uh, lieutenants that were female and sergeants. You know? Yeah, and they had clout, you know. So if they wanted me out of my cell two in the morning or three in the morning, they would just come and you know they would want to talk to me and grind it and never do that. But you don't think I would? You don't think I played? Wow. wow. Did all, all the other uh, guys in the prison ask to smell your fingers when you got back from, <laughs> from the meetings or anything? Because that would be like Rick. Rick Jones. Sniff no, the fingers man, out. No. I got I to gotta sniff that digit. Were no, they man, using the no, dream no, cream? No, 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 no. <laughs> you, you would have been watching the eyes too much. Yeah. Man. You eyes you know, out. That show scares the bejesus out of me. I would never even want to go near a prison. Forget about it. Everyone seems to be getting it in the uh, can. Somebody told me. Um, yeah, because of that show, we're not going to be torturing any girls anytime no, soon. No, no. No way. I, I was up for pardon us and um and the, and the people tell me everyone that does a part for that has to appear nude that's what it seems like right no well that's what it is that's yeah what it, and um say really I mean, that's totally ridiculous i mean it never happened but i mean i really don't even want to go through that prison experience but are again you, are you too shy to be nude on uh, tv there rick no nah, but they're gonna pay me more money than what they were offered <laughs> <laughs> he is a legendary yeah. Oh my yeah. God! We've all Legendary. heard uh, the stories. Uh, no, no, but you, no, you are, but, but you guys are the first guys that really. I, I mean, well, I just told you it was the truth that happened. There. Yeah, you guys are the very first guys that ever really asked me that question. Really? I never got into that. Oh, well, you'll be asked tomorrow. So we're ridiculous. Because what happened was, when, and you know, when I left, these uh, these these two uh, lieutenants who threw me like this. Kind of like a little party. Um, I think they got fired, which was really sad. Cold right geez. after I left. Because of what they were doing? No, with because one guy came in and he was, he, he was taking, one guy who was supposedly, uh, he was a seal, and he, he, he was kind of taking pictures of all of us, you know, eating pizza and, and party. And it was the night before I left. And, um, that, that was really the standard part of the pizza party. Yeah, I had a pizza party before I left. That's right. Hey, pizza, that's fine. What do you expect, Rick James? What do you expect? I'm supposed to be in the I'm heat. just thinking prison, Rick, and I'm no. thinking, you know. Prison is prison, man, and if you got, you know, if you got what you got, you get what you get. I know it from Oz. I'm thinking Rick James in the weight room looking for someone to change. Oz, and I I'm keep telling you that. Look at him. Here comes the Aryan Nation. Look out, they're trying no, to change Rick James. You know, if dive it, in front, dive. You know, I had one fight, man. You did? In CIC. It wasn't at all. I'm against some, uh... Uh, uh, Russian type Aryan dude, and uh, you choke him with your mule? No, but I whooped. His, <laughs> no, you know what I did? I whooped his ass. You did it in the bathroom. Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> he stuck with me about something weird. Me and him were having it out or something, and that was dormitory living, and he gave me a something. And I, you know, I stood up for myself, man. I'm not yeah. a punk. Like I said, if I would if I would have went in there uh, uh, acting like a punk, I would have, you know, they would have, they would have taken me as that. Yeah.
Well, there you go. Well, I would rearrange right in prison. Rich what about banging in jail? Man. I also want to ask you about um, Linda Blair. Linda Blair. I mean, that was uh, well, something that go. came out of nowhere. It was like all of a sudden. God, we're how we how we're really Blair. going here today? We are really touching the like, legends, I, man. I, I got to be honest with you. I've been you wanna, fascinated. What, what about what about? I'm Linda fascinated Blair? with your life. I'm fascinated with. Linda, how did you, how did you hook up with Linda Blair today, Rick? How did you hook up with her? All right, me and Linda met. There was a magazine called We Magazine. I remember that. Okay. We well, that was Lin good spanking, Linda. good jacking material. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> yeah, you do a lot of spanking, man. You gotta, you gotta. Let me get you an old lady at the show tomorrow, man. We was a lot better than anything else at the time, we, especially because they showed the uh, the roast beef shot. We were the, the roast beef shot. You know what I mean? The chewed hubba bubba shot. The chewed hubba bubba. What the? Looks like you chewed up some of that big pink bubble gum and threw it on a bubble shop oh, floor. Oh, that mouth. Right. Oh, okay. I like that. That vertical you know? mouth. It was good to give the give, give Jack into that. That magazine. I don't think Rick has ever jacked in his no, life. Man. No, man. Oh, no, please. What the guy, you just got to ring the bell. Oh, the ladies, pop the knob, please. Rick, when did you start Super getting laid? Freak. No, but no, back to that Linda Blair. Yeah. She had done a layout in Wee Magazine. Now, know. the only thing I knew about Linda Blair was I was scared to death when I was on Yeah. I'm not going to lie about it. I'm not going to sit here and try to be macho, man. Yeah. And I'm sure it did. Everybody was back at that time. Yeah. yeah. And um, Linda did a layout, and she was like, it was cold blooded. I mean, she was like, damn. All oh, those hands. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And they asked her, and along with the, like, the four or five page color pictures of her laying by this pool and all this, like, and all this other stuff, they asked her, uh, who, if there was one man that you had to be with, who would you want to be with? And she said, Rick James. <laughs> and that's this is an, an invitation to, for Rick in and, a goddamn Wee magazine. Yeah, exactly. Pretty so, much. But you know what? In the old days, that's how actresses and actors got together. Really? They would just they, say something they, in an interview? They would right. drop hints in so I, okay. How long did it take you to drop the magazine well, and pick up the phone? Well, my family came to me. The guy, was work, <laughs> <laughs> the guy who was working for me came to me. He said, look, Rick, read this. And I sent him some roses, and I ended up doing a, a wee layout, too. And we met here right in New York with Mark, uh, over at Mark Fleischman's yeah. uh, hotel. And we, and we met, um, and... Um, Hit it off? Yeah, we came really close. Wow. wow. That's, uh, and then what, what happened uh, with the relationship? Because you guys were together for how long? We were together for, we're off and on for a few years. We're still very close. Are you? Yeah. That's cool. Oh. What happened to the... Was it something that... Uh, you, the, did the drugs play a part, or...? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I was, yeah, she was trying to stop. I mean, and she had virtually pretty much stopped. I mean, she was still drinking a little, but. It's kind of hard uh, to hang out with a guy who's out well, of control. Well, well, no, I mean, she, um. Did she give you any of that exorcist talk? She, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that F me, F me, F me. You mean, mean that she rolled her head around the sun? Like <laughs> yeah. Screaming that F me, F me, F me. No, no, no. no, no, no. How? Y'all got to get Linda in here in the stands. See, I won't talk. No, I no. no I, I can't. No, we're just, we're just you guys will get her in here and y'all do the same thing. Her. I'd love to have her in here. She's well, a very well, pretty girl. She's a very, very sweet person. Without any detail, I'm not going to ask you to, you know, tell tales like that. You're not going to get it. But there had to be some point, especially the first time you did get intimate, where you're like, Screwing the exorcist chick. It's like, I'm in a uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. See, you with your ego, you're probably like, she's probably thinking, I'm screwing Rick James. <laughs> uh, I, I, <laughs> That's, you cool. Know, <laughs> That's cool, man. I'm not even going to touch it, man. Yeah. I'm not even going, I'm not going near it. I hear you. Uh, she'll hear about it. She'll never speak to me. Or whatever. <laughs> Grabbing them gravy or whatever. <laughs> Mule and... Yeah, I hear you. It's a fee fee, oh, by the way. That's funny. A fee fee. A fee fee. Oh, fee, -fee. Yeah, the, the, the prison badge is called a fee fee. Oh, a fee fee. The homemade uh, badge. The homemade thing. thing. Nah, what? What? They called it a fifi. They called it a fifi right. in the joint. Some guys can't just ring up the guards and bang them in another room. They got to make a fifi. Well, well, you know, hey, hey everybody in RJ, you know what I'm saying? I hear you. I get the stuff. I get That's that. for sure. What you think I'm going there and let George or Bubba go? Like, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> drill me? Like I said, my only <laughs> knowledge of prison is Oz. And Oz that's yeah. all I want to hear. I never want to get any closer to prison than my television set. And sometimes that's too much when they're showing the guys doing each other. Oh, that, that, Rick? You know what? I never saw a whole Oz. No? Never saw a whole Oz. I see little bits and pieces every time I see I kind of laugh because it's always over-dramatized. Yeah. I mean, it's not really like, well, where I was, uh, I mean, you have your sex, you have your Aryan Rays, and you have your Mexican mom, and you have your, 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 your That's you know, enough for me to not want to go. And everybody does sit in their parts of the, you know, uh, in, 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 in the kitchen or whatever. And, but, uh, 
You know, you know, and sometimes things break out and people get shot. But I mean, it, it's yeah, not whatever. You know, it's not <laughs> as it's prison <laughs> dramatic as uh, God you know, damn. You know. Yeah, it sounds, you know something? It's scared straight for me. You remember that show, Scared Straight, where they scared the kids uh, by taking them into prison? Matter of fact, don't they have a woman on there who's like, who takes stuff from dudes like whenever she wants or something? And I, she's kind of like, I'm taking you. Uh, oh, one of the uh, guards, yeah. yeah. She comes up and just, uh, dra much like uh, Rick and, James. And, and, then, and then the guys refuse sometimes? Yeah, well, she's a heifer yeah, pig. Who cares really when you're when you're drew twenty five years? You don't you don't care if she looks like Prince. You going to yeah. 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 You know? the question that everybody's been afraid to ask, Greg? What? Did you or Eddie Murphy write party all the time? <laughs> no, no, I I wrote party all the time. You did for Eddie. Gee, you wrote that just for him? Yeah. Wow. Well, the song did well at the time, Jim. Yeah, it did actually. Yeah? That song was the number one against radio's uh, permission. The radio didn't really want that song to go anywhere. I got it. Yeah, I know you guys. So you guys, Eddie was, Eddie was already a multi multi millionaire. Yeah. He wasn't doing any interviews. He didn't want to talk to you guys. You guys were always just trying to get him. He was saying, going, huh? Yeah, he was saying the hell with you. And y'all didn't want to play that record. But people kept calling up, you know, those, those little <laughs> honest stuff. <laughs> just can't, uh, <laughs> nobody in we the can't. fucking world can get away with this shit. Talking. <laughs> Wait a minute, Rick. Wait Why a minute. are you going to bleep me? Hold it, Rick. <laughs> <I'm> having... <laughs> We're out of dump now. We have ran out of delay. That's hilarious. Yeah. We ran out of delay. Now we're going to have to play that with all the bleeps in it. Sometimes. I know. Every time you curse, they dump they dump out of the show. You know what? You guys, man, are incredible. You get away with you. Get we away. have fun. But we Rick, have fun, Rick. But Rick, is this, is this fun though? You're being honest. We're asking some questions. It's being fantastic. And no one's it's turning right. off their radio because this is fascinating. It's we learned that Rick yeah. James was getting it's back fantastic. to prison. I was, I was already with by females. I wish our radio was like this. It's a blast. We just hang what out. What about talking about your show tomorrow? Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yes. Rick James is playing BB King's uh, BB King Blues Club West Forty Second between Seventh and Eighth tomorrow and Saturday. That's a cool club, man. I know. Very been. nice. Yeah, yeah, very cool. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, Rick, See Rick James down there. Rick, I don't want to bring the mood down at all, but I, I do have to ask you: Is it true you had a stroke? In late '98? Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, about two and a half years ago, I did in Denver. Yeah. Well, it must have been minor. Thank no, God. No, no, no. No? It, no, it was, uh, I broke two blood vessels in the back of my neck. Uh, cerebellum and the I was in the hospital seven months. Wow. And, uh, Damn. I wasn't able to walk. I wasn't no. able to see straight. I wasn't able to, uh, write. And I did five months of rehab. It was, um, it was a very humbling experience, I must say, you know? Wow. And I, I can't say what it was from. The doctor said I moved, I moved my neck, maybe. I moved my head. Well, don't say that. I'm not even going to move now. Say <laughs> No one's me making everyone scared. Yeah, because oh, we all no, wake no, up no, in the no. morning and kind of like you you know, crick the neck a little bit and you can't move all day. Now I'm going to worry I'm going to have a stroke. But I, you know, it was very hot at this place. And, um, you know, Denver is pretty high up, you know. Oh, it was in Denver, yeah. Yes. Denver got yeah, a but, uh, yeah, I did. And it was like... Uh, it took me five months to, you know, just to be able to catch the ball or just go to write my name. Rick, wow. walk us through it, though. You wake up in the morning and all of a sudden you know something's wrong? I mean... No, I went off stage, man. I went off stage and uh, I felt fine and I uh, went back to the hotel. And um, a guy who works for me named Tom, uh, uh, I asked him, you know, he's, I asked him to rub, you know, my neck side. Of it. I said, would you like to try to get that out? And then he touched it. I just didn't even want to be touched. So I went to the window and it, it, it just seemed like I drank... Uh, I mean, I, I never have, but it seemed like I have drank 40 bottles of bourbon, so the whole room just went Whoa. top, you know, and there was, there was no, you know, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, was, and then I went to the hospital, and I walked out of the hospital, and the next morning I, like, couldn't, um... Why, they misdiagnosed it? Yeah, they sure did. What did they say? Ah, oh, you pinched the nerve. No, they they said I had, um, if you believe this, I laid in that, I, I laid in that hospital room, about five hours. They said I had gastritis. Gas. Jesus. Or something, or something very close right. to Right. And they gave me this bottle of stuff to take. And I walked out. I walked back to the hotel room and I was fine. I mean, I took the car back to the hotel. Then the next morning, I like, the right side of me cringed and I, I, it, it was just a weird oh. And, and uh, when my old lady picked me up in LA, she said she didn't recognize I was in a wheelchair. And, uh, <clears throat> I couldn't focus. The whole room was still moving all around. And um, 
She wanted me to go to the hospital then, but I said, well, I'll wait till the morning. In the morning, it was the same thing. They took me in, and I said, really, it was, she brought me right in the nick of time. <clears throat> It, it was a it was a bad thing. I didn't ever think you know that was. Did you wow. do anything uh, about the first doctors you saw? You know, I really felt like suing them and uh, mm -hmm. going through all of that. But um, I don't know what uh, a friend of mine told me. Um, even if I did, it would, it would only be so much money. There's a law in Denver. Um, yeah, because they really, uh, I mean, they really didn't give me the EKGs, and they didn't... Maybe if they got a little earlier, it wouldn't you know have been what? so long. I'm going to tell you, man, you know, the honest thing about it was, man, the way I felt, the way they threw me on a gurney was like, here's this drug rock musician, and it, it was uh, a drug thing, and here's this cat, you know, and, and the hell with me, the, the, way, mm -hmm. the way they threw me around. You know, wow. and, you know I, I felt really... Uh, Almost racist overtones, where they because it was kind of sprinkly rain. They had me laying on the rain a little bit, you know. I felt a little, uh, a, a little disgraced. Not many know. of the brothers in Denver, huh? No, no, not a lot of brothers yeah. in Denver, baby. I wish you know. Okay. Did you, Jeez, did you lose any sensation or anything? Yeah, my whole right side. I mean, I, right I, side. I, I still have a little problem um, with my equilibrium, but uh, you know, but hey, God is good. Things are good, man. I mean, I'm back on the road and yep. having fun, and you know, I'm here with you guys. Very cool. Whacking the walk and pulling Whacking the and jacking. <laughs> and the muffin the moon and, the <laughs> and chilling the liver. Whatever. whatever it takes, man. <laughs> you guys got the words. <laughs> we, and you better stop watching eyes. I'm telling you, leave yeah. eyes alone. We love uh, the eyes. <laughs> a frightening show. All right, Rick James. You want to take some phone calls, Rick? I don't know how much time we got with you. They're saying five. Sure, man. Well, yeah, yeah, of course. Can I'm you hang sure. for a little longer? Yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, you guys, I wouldn't want to leave. All right, cool. Let's go to Paul. Hey, Paul. What's going on, man? Hey, guys. What's going on? Hey. Excuse me, Mr. James. You call me Rick. Oh, okay. Excuse me, Mr. Rick. <laughs> Did you ever see the movie Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas with Johnny Depp? Oh, that was a good one. What was the name of it? Fear, Fear and, and Loathing in Las, in Las Vegas. Vegas. A lot of Fear drugs. and Loathing in Las Vegas. No, I never saw that one. It's I, a must-see on the rental. I, anyway, I, I, right I, next to that and Ronnie Dangerfield, you are the world's greatest thing to ever come out of America, sir. I never heard you know of that. What? I want to thank you very much. Thank you, man. <laughs> thank you, man. Thank you very, very much for that compliment. Hey, God bless, man. Thank you, man. Thank hey. you very much. I hope you hope you come to the show uh, tomorrow or Saturday. I'll try and make it, sir. BB King. Try and make it. Introduce yourself, man. Yeah, BB yeah. King uh, Blues Club, West 47th. See, that kind, of, now, see that's that's the kind of stuff that keeps me going. Hey, uh, and uh, you were born and raised in Buffalo. We're on in Buffalo now, Rick. Oh, really? Ooh. Yeah. Oh, I'll never be able to go home again. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I, I may get arrested when I walk out of here. Yeah, you just might. So you're the guy knocking out all the uh, seals and for Okay. <laughs> hey, we got a we put together a fact uh, a fact uh, sheet. You know, we all got together and then try to figure out what we want to talk about here. Is it true your mother ran numbers for the Italian mob? Yes, she did. She ran numbers for the gangsters. And she fed eight. She, ra she raised eight children by herself from it. And from I'm running not, numbers? And, and from running numbers. And I'm proud to say, she also played numbers, too. Oh, yeah. What you know that is. You go to sleep, you dream, and you wake up, and you play a number, and you hit. Well, she did that, too. And uh, she hit off all of us. And all. she made a very, very lucrative. Uh, sent my brother to Georgetown University, top law school. Sent my sister to the top uh, college school with CPA. Uh, she, we, she did very well. Yes, she did run numbers. Oh. I'm proud to say it. Numbers runner. Yep. Nice. Yeah, yeah, my family did that too, but I'm yeah. Italian, so it's, it was the law. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, we, we were going, no, we had to pay y'all. <laughs> hey, John, you're next with Rick James. What's up? Hey, how you doing, Mr. James? Rick, I was wondering, what do you think about uh, MC Hammer making all that money up this song? Uh, well, number one, if you didn't make all as much money as you think, uh, he, um, when someone does a song of mine, they, they have to make a deal with my administrator. MC Hammer did about an 80 20 deal. Where he made his money was when he was, uh, touring. Um, I make the majority of the money when they do a sample deal, okay? Uh, but what he did wrong was buying helicopters and guns for the Oakland police. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and, and horses for 500000 Man, that guy knew how to spend his money. He, he was a, he, he, a total fool. And, and really the thing I'm really pissed off about, I'm not, no, he paid, no, I got paid very well off that. And, uh, but the thing I'm really mad about, he never ever really once said one time that, you know, it was a Rick James song. He never, uh, because he won awards for that song, right? No, we won, no, we both, no, we won a Grammy together because right. he put himself in as, as one of the writers. And he, uh, but know. he never said, you know, he said, I read one magazine, he said, I took a Rick James guitar lick. What? 
Mm. Uh, you know, but yes, he played very, very well, and he got very, very broke. <laughs> I th that, another great behind the music was uh, him. Now he's a preacher. Buying that goddamn mansion that he bought. and uh, well, Now he's a preacher. It brought the Oakland police uh, guns and help. Yeah. Hey, here's something you're going to kill some more blacks. Oh, <laughs> we know you need help. I know you need help. So here, you can't touch this. Go kill some more of the blacks in Oakland. You know, some helicopters and guns. That made off a Rick James record. Go kill them. Holy Seems like you're holding a grudge there. Uh, well, you know, hey, God bless this. Uh, you know, like I said, he's, you know, he's preaching now. Uh, yeah, they all go to God when they get broke. <laughs> Even in prison, everybody gets very religious. Yeah, huh? They all become Muslims and Christians, and when they get out, it's... You son of a bitch! <laughs> you, pro you probably, uh, you know, got a, got a little more spiritual, but you didn't go the I whole got, route, right? Well, you know, I'm... I, I, I was born Catholic, so I got I messed up my head, messed up on the job. <laughs> uh, you know, now we know this level spirit trouble is all the point, man. Right, right. But I'm, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm a true spiritualist. I, you know, I, I truly believe in, in, in God, and I, and I try to, uh, I try to stay taqwa. You know, God conscious everything I do, you know, and uh, I just try to be a good person, man. I think everybody was expecting after your uh, hardships for you to come out and uh, have the collar on and just start preaching the words of Jesus. <laughs> Say, hey, yo. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. If anything, I'm just preaching for people, man, to have fun, man, and uh, just do each other better, man. Love each other. That's, a, That's what it is. See, a lot of that. the Rick James songs are just all purely about effing, which I think was no, great. No, no, you know, that is totally wrong. <laughs> yes. You know, that is come like, on. no, that is totally wrong. Man, I've written songs about MXIs, ICBMs, a missile. I've written songs about dropping nuclear... Uh, Everyone nuclear knew what that missile was. A big <laughs> slung, Rick. Oh, I man. got the metaphor. Come I've on. written songs about Mary Jane. I mean... Mm -hmm. Mary Jane's slang for that. Every song. <laughs> so, <laughs> you're coming in other from. words, what you're saying is every song I've ever written has to do with poon -tang. Right. poon -tang. You are so sick. <laughs> And I, I thought I was, and I thought I was really doing some writing some politically. <laughs> you know, some, some, people that want to just scratch the surface songs. might see that, but you look deep like uh, me, you realize I, everything's about effing <laughs> and, and his hog. Right. That MX missile, let's get a mule, man. Isn't it? You're going to go crash into well, some well, 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 Even the Mary Jane girls. You know, right. Now, my house, okay? Yeah. That was, uh, my, I wrote a song, My House for the Mary Jane Girls. My house, that's the house vagina. your missile, which is, yeah. No, that's, my house is a vagina. <laughs> right. And the key that unlocks the door, that is the uh, right. primary. That's, that's, that's lubricant. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, you know, that case, yeah. Where are you coming from? Exactly. Because her lover wasn't home. Probably someone like you whacking the wolf. <laughs> Pulling the meats and pulling the glory. Jack, yeah. Jack, at the fee fee. Hey, yeah, yeah. Now, this is a lot of fun, Rick. I got to tell you. Uh, let's go to uh, John. John. John, what's up? Hey, John. My name's Mark. Oh, hi. <laughs> what's up, man? My name is Mark. Geronimo. Mr. James, you and I had met at a party one time. Oh. Do you recognize my voice? No, I guess not. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it's deep. I know that. At a party, did, were you yeah. tied up in a closet being burnt with a crack pipe? No, it was not like that. Man. It wasn't like that. <laughs> so, Everybody so, had a so, misconception so. about face and crack. Believe me. So I'm drawing more You know what? It's, it's so hysterical. I got to bring this up again. Face the the free base people. Buddy. Just look down on the crackhead. Because crack is they garbage and free base is real cocaine. I didn't spend a million dollars on that crap for nothing. <laughs> Tell them, Geronimo, we learned something in our addiction, didn't we? The thing is, it's like driving into a brick wall at 100 miles an hour with a Rambler or a Lexus. Crack? You're still dead. Crack is the... <laughs> what is the no way, but no. <laughs> A little more style Crack on the way into the, the wall. Poor man's free base. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Okay. James. Yes, sir. Um, you came out great. I mean, uh, out of prison and everything like that. But when we partied together, it was years ago, man. Oof, many years ago. The drug situation, everybody thinks when you take that one puff, that's not how it's going to get. That's untrue. It's all in, in, in reference to the person doing it. That's right. And I'm not, you know... Saying no, people should true. do it or shouldn't do it. It's up to them. That's true. And in reference to torturing, man, a girl who gets tortured after doing crack, she must be bugging her brains out. <laughs> There's no such thing. But um, you're a great guy, and uh, they just twisted things around. I knew it wasn't true about you. Thank you. Know, I just hope that uh, Thank you, man. Yeah, I'm cool too. But uh, <laughs> hey, Florentine, where'd you party with uh, Rick James? <laughs> uh, <laughs> would you say to me? Where did you party no, with no, Rick James? Say, what was the first word? Would you party? Florentine. 
Florentine. You sound like, like a guy, Florentine. yeah, that we know. My name is not Florentine. No? My name is Jerome Moore from Worcester. All right. All right. Hey, thanks, bro. And he's not going to tell you where we party together. Right. Hey, what do you think he's going to tell you? Yeah. Uh, Chris has a question for Rick James. Chris. Hey, what's up, Rick? How's it going, man? What's up, Chris? Um, I have two questions. First question is, is it true that you gave it to Aretha Franklin in the back door? <laughs> what? Uh, is that a rumor? a rumor about that? Is that actually a rumor You know about what? That? Didn't Absolutely. I tell you this boy was gay when I when he got all Didn't I tell you he was going to give me some kind of... Listen, listen to me. What is this back door stuff with you, okay? Well, no, the blue no, What kind of fetish do you have with this back door? Be proud. Listen. Be proud of your homosexuality, okay? <laughs> oh. No, I mean that. Be proud of it, okay? Whatever you are, whatever you are, be proud. Stand strong. Come out of the closet. Wave your freak flag high, boy. But don't call me up asking about a week of flag in the back door. Next question. Give me somebody. Give me somebody with some pride. Wait, 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 Rick. Relish your gayness, Rick. Chris. He's talking about the uh, balloon nut there, Rick. Dude, she still walks, so obviously he didn't give it to her. In the I back would door. love. You know what? I would love him to get with Aretha and ask that. Yeah, she'll kick his ass, Woo! right? Have his ass rolling all over here. Can you show Aretha some respect? All right, what's the next question? What's the next question? All right. I don't know if he's having fun anymore. Well, he said he has two. Yes, he has. I blew him off for you. Oh, well. Yeah. Uh, oh, jo oh uh, Joe's been waiting an hour to talk to you. Joe, Joe, what's going on, bro? Hey, what's up, man? Hey, Rick, man, you, you like, you one of the, my, my biggest idols growing up, uh, but are you completely clean now? Uh, as, uh, as far as I mean, I drink a little wine every now and then. How about some weed? <laughs> uh, uh, what are you offering? You got some Mary Jane? You got some good Mary Jane? Yeah, I got outside now. You got some good Mary Jane? You going to have out in front for me? Well, hey, you know, we got a stairwell, Rick. <laughs> that, that was like, we that take was it like out to the stairwell. How, how do you feel about all these new rappers, like, taking your gimmick and getting on Casey Kasem Countdown? I never heard you on that. I've been on Casey Kasem Countdown before. Well, now it's like every other song is like... Like a rap song on it. You ever heard him? I'm going to go smoke well, some I, free I, bass with Rick James. Hi, I'm Casey Kasem. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I don't really know what's going on with Casey. I mean, you know, the things have changed, man, in, in 20 years. You know, right now rap is, uh, hip hop is happening. And uh, what do you think of it? Uh, good. What do you think of today's music? Uh, it, it depends on what today's music we're talking about. Who you like and who you well, Come on, Rick. Who you, not you know it's all whack. My man, after watching his best buddy, uh, Notorious B.I.G., get smoked and assassinated, uh, the uh, P. Diddy continued oh, oh. and forged on with his bad boy family. Yeah, exactly. So his uh, P. Diddy and Rob uh, Black Rob in at number ten. Come on, man. You know, well, you know, real well, master this. You know, it's fine. okay. Well, let me just put it. Let, let me just put it like this. There's some rap out there that is positive, but, but when rappers get out there, used to be word and the N word, and when they talk about shooting each other and they talk about AKs, that I completely frowned down on. Okay, uh, totally. So I mean, there's, there's probably more negative rap out there than there is positive. See, but they'd say we're just keeping it real. Yeah, they, well, they, you know, they, they can say what the hell they want. They're taking it from the streets, what they grow yeah, up well, with. Well, you know what? And then putting it on the. You the, know what? Most people that say the N word have no idea what it means because it has nothing to do with black or ignorant or anything. They have no idea what it means. A, n a nigger means foul fish in Swahili. In a world translation book, it means foul fish. It has nothing to do with ignorant. We, we used to call ourselves that out of an endearment thing. White people took it as a derogative thing, number one. So they don't know what the hell they're saying. Number two, every woman to me is not a bitch. My mother is a one. My sister is a one. And my old lady is a one. And I hate to hear that word. That one that says I, you're kidnapped is one. You can call her. Yeah, you can call her. bitch I know. <laughs> call her uh, the C word. That one. <laughs> but, uh, that's the only bitch I know. But, but the bottom line is, is that black music is where it is. Is basically one reason is because the government has taken musical instruments and stuff out of schools. So these kids don't really have a way to go. So what? What do they do? They sample, and they do the best that they can. Uh, I, I wish that lyrically uh, they would. Uh, Start singing about take, mules again. Take it to another level. <laughs> but hey, hey, but they, they argue with you that, like, you know, Rick, maybe you're just not in touch with what's going on these days. I mean, so it's, you know what? There's nothing more going on than what it was before. There's still a ghetto. There's still poverty. There's still drug addiction. There's still racism. You know, it's the same thing, man. Ain't nothing changed. Ghetto life is the same. Okay? Now it ain't Mary Jane. Now it's in no one crying. Now we don't pull our pants up. Now they're sagging. You know, <laughs> I mean, what the hell? I mean, there's no difference, man. There's no right. difference. It's all. You know, uh, 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 now there's Michael Jordan, okay? And now, and now instead of Temptations, you got NSYNC. Um, uh, uh, since time to time, you got Britney Spears. Between them. Yeah, I mean, you know, white music and uh, and Latino. Thank God, too, because Latino, I mean, I'm glad to see so many Latins finally making it. But, I mean, 
white white people have basically taken over R and B. I mean, it's R and B based on on the on the, uh, on the back end. It's just that wimpy stuff like In Sync and In Sync and Backstreet and, and Britney Spears. Rick, no one's listening, crap. man. Hey, people do that selling millions of records, man. You know, it's, it's like, twelve and thirteen year olds, maybe. Well, you know, but, yeah. but we were twelve and thirteen year old, you know at one time. You know? And you were having sex, right? I was having sex when I was <laughs> nine years old. Man, I was knocking it out. You know, um, wait, I'm wait, wait, nine wait, years old. Wait, slow down. We got to hear the story. Nine. You didn't lose it at nine. Yeah, I did. Holy Jesus. To who? A girlfriend of my sister. I wrote a song about called Get a Life. We're going to dance You know what's interesting, too? His sister. age matched how many inches he was packing at the time, too. <laughs> which is so disturbing for me as a white guy. You know what? It, it's funny because a lot of guys, a lot of guys talk about their first time. They act like they're Don Juan. The first time I ever had sex, I put it in every orifice I could. <laughs> I didn't know what hole to put it in. Man. And then when I thought his big climax was coming, I leaped up out and ran to the corner of the basement and, and thought I was going to the bathroom. <laughs> Nothing came out, so I went back in. And that is the living truth. God damn it, is that funny? That's true, man. Look, I don't know what they dumped out of. We will replay that with you. Didn't know, so. Well, he didn't know the sensation that was coming up was him getting ready to finish. Well, nice. So he, he, uh, he, like, got out of the bed, ran away into the corner. It wasn't a bed. It was a human being, man. There you go. <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> there you go again. Uh, I, I, I was just trying to clean it up a little bit. <laughs> with that muff in the move again. <laughs> the feet The yeah. The so, feet So he thought he had to do go to the bathroom. No, she was a friend of my sister's, and it was yeah. really... Um, How old was she? She was 14. And wow. she's a friend of my older sister. Woman. And it happened in the projects in Buffalo. And, you know, I'm very... And, uh, Fruit Street. Maybe that's why I've always had a thing for older women or something. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Muffin the move. <laughs> Muffin the move. Slapping the slap jacket. Jacket. Come and jack 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 me off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Rick James is playing BB uh, King Blues Club tomorrow night and Saturday night, Anthony. Turn that radio down. Hey, Mary, what's up? Hi, guys. Sorry to bother. You know what I want to ask? Is he going to write a book? And if he does, you guys should do the interview. You are too funny. Well, he, uh, yeah, he, he said that earlier. Mary, he, by the way, yes, I do have a book coming out. It's called uh, Confessions of a Super Freak. should be out this year. Uh, Excellent. I can't wait. And um, a woman by the name of Suzanne DePass who did... Uh, all the movies that very good. We did a Motown, Mahogany, Lazy Days Blues, Temptations, mm -hmm. Jackson movies. She's doing the movies, so uh, hopefully that'll be done within a year or so. Who's yeah. playing Rich James? You know, uh, they're talking to, talking to that. You, have you ever seen uh, Sparks? Yes. Or, or Dead yes. Presidents? Oh, yeah. You, you remember the light skinned guy who got beat up at the pool? Yep. yep. Well, yeah, they're talking Is that Earl Douglas? Earl Douglas? I think that's Earl right. Douglas. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Earl Douglas. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, we don't know his name. <laughs> my my sister meant to. But anyway, they're talking to him. Right on. Hey, Dave, what's up? Hey. What's up, Dave? How you guys Dave? doing, man? Hey. Having fun, man. Having fun, man. Looking to me. About the poon and whatnot. So, uh, can you contend with Will Chamberlain's title? Yeah, how many girls have you banged if you had a game? Now, you know what? Will Chamberlain was a lion mother and <laughs> bleep. Do you believe Will Chamberlain? <laughs> he said what? Over, he said he over 10,000. Oh, 10, you know what? I wouldn't, you know, number one, I wouldn't even want to take a stupid ass guess like that. <laughs> number one, Will is a liar. God rest his soul up there, you know, or down wherever he is. 10,000 women. Yeah. I mean, the guy is nine feet tall. What are you, a midget? So, uh, <laughs> you know, I mean, whatever I ran into him, he was alone. Yeah. yeah. I don't know where these 10,000 women come in at. Yeah, uh, if you do the math, it works out. He would just have to be effing every second of the day. Every thing. second. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he, he could barely play basketball, let alone, I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know, ball. <laughs> I mean, the real ball. Did you, Next. Did you ever did you ever party with Ozzy Osbourne? Uh, no, but I know Ozzy very well, and uh, Ozzy's really, oh, really nice. I know I never did. Never did. Mm -hmm. He always asks that. He's a huge uh, yeah, yeah, he's Ozzy. Robot. Yeah, yeah. You can tell, right, by looking at him? Ozzy's pretty sick right now, man. He's not, he's not doing all that. Doesn't Norton look like some of the Aryan guys from prison? <laughs> no, 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 because he doesn't have a big swash sticker tattooed on his forehead. And, <laughs> wait, and, wait, wait. Did you just say Ozzy's sick? Yeah. What's wrong? Well, last month, he, just, he just didn't look well in LA last month, though. No. Just look well. Well, on that uh, on that TV show he's got now, the Osbournes on MTV, they actually have a camera in Ozzy's house with his wife and kids. Uh, he looks like a um, he comes off like a retarded older gentleman. Yeah, he, he's really it's moving. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's like uh, the movement's a little slow. I mean, yeah, things do not seem right in the Osbournes. It's the finest sitcom ever done. I went to a I went to a party of his not long ago, and um, he's, he's he seems fine. He just doesn't seem well. Not like me. Not well. You have any regrets, Rick James? 
Do you have any regrets? Any regrets at all? Yeah, then I never got my hands on Tim Bassinger that night that I put him. Oh. No, 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 no. Uh, hey, we have a, a, any regrets that night? You know what? could have. I could have. Listen to that. Moved him up, yeah. Really? Hey, no, 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 no. Uh, you went home and jacked it. I jacked it. I jacked it. <laughs> <laughs> I, jacked it. <laughs> I, really, I really kind of jacked I really done my life. <laughs> hey, uh, Ozzy wants to say something to Rick James. Oh, Ozzy. Ozzy. Hello, guys. How are you? Oh, hello, Ozzy. Hello, Rick James. How are you, man? How are you, baby? Oh, uh, yeah, man. I'm I'm, all right. I'm 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 doing okay, man. I, you you ever hear you ever hear some of my music, man? It's a little different than than your style, but you know, I was, well, since we're both in the in the in the industry, you know, I was just wondering, you, you know, Ozzy Osbourne. Well, he just said he kind of knows uh, you, Ozzy. Uh, uh, oh, he doesn't sound good. Who, me or Rick James? You, Ozzy, you sound a little confused. Uh, you know, I'm a little tired. I, I, I had, you know, I've had stuff going on, you know. You might, you might have heard about some stuff, but, you know, I'm just... <laughs> you I'm sound just, like you need a drink. <laughs> I actually, I, I quit drinking with Rick James, uh, where, you know, I'll meet you at a bar. Ozzy. We have a little contest. So, uh, Ozzy, free base or uh, crack? What do you like? Oh, I like the free bass, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell that. I, with, uh, with a little acid mixed in it, right? No, a little, you know, a little acid, a little THC? No, that, that might ruin it, Rick. No, no, no. no it, it, it heightens it. It heightens the, the uh, hallucinations. So when you start whooping and burning them, it, it gives you a more of a marquee the side type thing. Oh, my God. Know? That would be insane. Yeah. A acid. All right, guys. We're going to let you go. And a little, right, and right, and a little bit of THC. <laughs> Maybe a special K, either one. If you don't have THC special K. That's all you need. The monsters you see can run faster. <laughs> Great, Rick. Ozzy, <laughs> 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 you, you really don't remember uh, meeting a bunch of occasions, me and your wife and you, huh? Yeah, he's gone. Oh, oh well. they left. Yeah, Bill, what's Damn going it. on? Hey, how you guys doing? Hey, hey Bill. Hey, love your show. Cool. Thank you, Bill. I look forward to it every day, getting off work, driving home, so I can listen to you guys. You guys crack me up. You listen to these guys every day? Oh, Are you okay? okay? Isn't that oh, sad, Rick? What? <laughs> what? what? Except Norton, you know. I can't stand him, but hey, hey, we, we should have it all. We if, I would, if I didn't have to be here, I would not listen to the show. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I, the only reason I listen is because I'm here. Uh, we should tell Rick what we're doing tomorrow on the show. Why? We're torturing girls all day. Oh, right? man. This, this, this has nothing to do with You me. have to invite me because there's a, way, there's a way you have to tie them up. And there's a way that you have to, like, stuff their mouths on the end. That's really... Hey, you, know what the, you know what the ultimate torture is? <laughs> what? Taking them to Norton's apartment. Oh, oh stop. Oh, come on now. That would just Yeah, well, what, that's very mean, no, no, that sir. That wasn't very, that wasn't very. You're, 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 you know. I wanted to, uh, wanted to call in and give my respect to Rick James. Hey, well, you I'm know. I'm a 45-year-old, bald, middle-aged guy growing up in Ohio. Listened to your stuff growing up. Had a big impact on my life. Well, I hope <laughs> hey, speaking of which, Malik lost his uh, virginity to uh, one of your songs there. Malik, what's up? Yo, what's up? What's up, Malik? Yo, I want to give a shout out to Rick, man. Yo, yo I lost my virginity on that dude. That's my idol. Yo, son. yo, well, yo, Malik, yo, yo, check this out. That's good, man, because uh, that's what we here to please. You understand? Yeah, no doubt. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you know, Keeping it real, baby, all the time. You understand me? What was yeah. the tune, man? It was, it was, it was terrific. Yo, just hearing you on the radio, just. Just revised me. I had to come home and twist something up in, 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 in memory, in memory of, of of old great Rick. I understand. You know, twist it up and smoke it. You understand? And like, while you do, or you know, think of busting out. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, this is what I wanted to ask you though. What, yeah. what happened to um? Uh, what happened to the Mary Jane girls? At one time they fought. Mary Jane hoes. I mean, girls. <laughs> the Mary Jane girls. <laughs> the Mary Jane girls. Huh? Well, uh, the Mary Jane girls kind of broke up, but uh. Me and Mary Jane Blige are kind of working on a project right now for the new Mary Jane Girls. All right. But uh, the Mary Jane Girls are still around. I mean, you got one running around fabricating that she's, she's the uh, uh, true thing, but uh, don't believe it. Okay? Right. Uh, and we will be, the Mary Jane Girls will be back together again shortly. All right. Yo, and another thing. Yeah, what's that, baby? Yo, what I got to do to get in to see this show tomorrow? Yo, man? you got to come up, you got to come up with some Mary Jane. <laughs> yo, I'm saying, yo, no, listen. You understand what I'm saying? You got to come up with the real thing, too. Yo, well, that's the BB King. Not that zoo dirt. Son, I was, I was up there. I came to see O and A because I listen to their show. I'm a brother in the hood trying to help out with the, with the other, with the other man. And, and I came up to the show 
and and they didn't let me in because they having some meeting. And I had the R. Kelly tapes. What, 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 uh, what? Ten ruined our uh, viewing of the R. Kelly tapes? Yes, yeah, son. Yo, I had the R. Kelly tapes. I told Stink. Yo, I was like, I got hey, something for you. We got to get Mal Malik into the show tomorrow. Come on. Yeah, well, you, know what, Malik, drum, you know, come see the guys, and you're going to get you in, baby. All right, hold on the line there, Malik. We'll see what we can do for you, all right? All right. Yeah, oh, I got to ask him a question. Malik? Uh, put put Malik back on. Yeah, okay. Malik. 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 Yeah. You're from Asbury Park? from Asbury. I'm the cat that was on the phone with y'all a while ago trying to get hooked up with Chrissy. Is that Asbury Park, though? Yeah, the Stone Pony. I'm going to be performing there next week, son. I just got to ask you something. Is it true that the U.S. Army invaded Asbury Park because they thought it was Afghanistan? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. A helicopter's landed, troops came out, and actually, in some cases, came under more fire in Asbury Park than they have been in Afghanistan. Is that true, uh, Malik? No, nah, it wasn't. It wasn't the <laughs> Afghanis. It wasn't the Army. It was Rick James and his crack posse, yo. <laughs> Yo, see, there you go, man. Matter of fact, ma 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 fact, you can't come. Yo, man, check this out. Hey, yo, Rick. Don't show your face at the joint, baby, okay? Hey, yo, Rick, don't do that to me, Yo, bro. come on, baby, because I got somebody who's like six foot seven with muscles and he's dying to meet you. Yo, I'm only five foot. No, well, why you want to come with the crack jokes, man? Come on. Now, did we just finish explaining crackers for poor folks, but free base for rich folks? <laughs> you right, Rick. Yeah, we, okay, I'm, then, I'm, all I'm right. Say you sorry, Malik. I'm sorry. All right, I'll I'll see you tomorrow. Hold on. Uh, Malik, I'm sorry. Uh, one more. we got to get him out of here, but one more. Yeah, Let's one go more. Ken. See what you did to me? Hey, Ken, <laughs> what's going on? Hey, guys. Hey. Hey, uh, I'm from Philly. I grew up in Orchard Park, New York. Uh, that's where my ranch is. Yeah, that's right. Primarily white suburb of Buffalo. That's right, but there's a brother, a new brother in town now. Hey, Rick, what it, a, a day it was when you would drive through the middle of town, and all your boys packed me your Excalibur. Excalibur, Cornies, Rolls Royce, double seater Mercedes van, Jeep. We would all of them, and my horses. <laughs> I've never seen any horses, man. Well, I got Morgans at the ranch. I, I guess you know about that. If you know about uh, the Excalibur and, and everything else. But, man, That's why I moved into Orchard Park until all of them went. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, man. Right, fine. Well, we had to come out of that, too. Hey, Kevin, uh, you know Kevin Rosen? Kevin Rosen. Kevin! Hello. What's up, Kevin? You're on with Rick James. Is this Rick? Yeah, right here, man. Rick James? This is Rick James right here. I'm sorry, man. I'm on a cell phone in Buffalo, New York, man. How are you today, sir? What's happening, man? How's below, man? It's fantastic. Rick James, I was the gentleman that used to take care of your mom at 274 Delaware. I'm very good friends with Penny Johnson. I did your first stage, Stone City Tour at the Pierce Arrow Building. Yeah. I introduced you to Luis Continelli from Courier Express. That's right. Hey, that's, that's, that's true. true. Trade Apple Young Men of Your Body Guys. Kevin Rogers, six-time world super heavyweight kickboxing champion. That's right. Mr. <laughs> Newton, sir. That's right. Yeah, that's right, Kevin. Yes, you are, man. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. What's happening, Kev? Not much, man. I'm back in Buffalo, running the Buffalo Athletic Club. I got uh, three kickboxing schools in Buffalo, and, uh, you know. Oh, it sounds like he's doing very well. I was born no, this guy, this guy, this is a real good, this is a real good guy. I love you. Hey, I love you too, baby. Hey, look, you know, Kevin, uh, we, I don't know if we're going to be playing Buffalo this year, but we'll be playing close. Uh, why don't you come on by and see me, man, as soon as you hear about it. Definitely, definitely. I was at your house several times. Louise Cantonelli. Remember Louise McCurry? Of course, with the Buffalo Curry News. She's still a good friend of mine. All right, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. All right, Kevin. There goes Kevin. Bye -bye. You, you guys are deep in Buffalo, ain't you? We're all Yo, Buffalo, what's happening? I, you know what? <laughs> you just realized. Why you playing haters out there? I still love you. Don't be mad. Don't be mad because I'm black and I'm rich and I look good. Don't be mad. Don't be mad about the Soul City Band. Don't be mad. Don't be angry. <laughs> hey, John, what's going on? Uh, I'm just calling. I'm uh, from Boston. Yeah. Uh, listen, uh, used to listen to you guys up here. Yeah. Uh, Brian Boston right now. Damn, y'all all over the place. I'm really syndicated. Yeah, I know. They weren't lying to me. Don't say it too many times. They might realize it and say, what the hell did we do? <laughs> 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 what, are we crazy? Go ahead, John. Uh, I was just seeing if you guys had a new Bonics dictionary for me to understand this interview, guys. Leave it to, believe it to the friggin' Boston. Boston. Right. Well, you know, we're hardly square, you know. I'm from Saudi. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Yeah, you're from Saudi? I'm from Saudi. I'm from around that area, though. Yeah, I figured. Well, 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 at least we got a basketball team, man. The one place Rick James will never perform. Woo, no, you know, hey, you know what? I played Boston. Check this out, man. I played Boston. 
And I, I watched I watched the Boston police that beat them down on horses. They wouldn't let Michael Jackson in Boston, okay? Yeah. That's how racist they are, all right? Boston, and, and the Boston, the city, man. Boston is no joke, okay? They will beat you down. <laughs> you cross over to that bridge, Tracy Chapman said it, you cross over that bridge and that's your ass. <laughs> <laughs> they don't care who you are. Bill Russell, my ass. <laughs> cross over that bridge three o'clock in the morning to see what happens. Okay? You got it, man. But well, we still love you, Boston. One day I will be back. All right? Uh, too much. I can't run a brother away forever. <laughs> well, Rick, we're being told to get you out of here. Yeah, Rick, man, man thanks you know so much. All I can say is, man, I've had one of the greatest experiences, the greatest times on the radio with you guys. It's man. been a lot of fun, let, man. Let me tell you, thank you for being honest and open with us. Yeah, you guys are the same, man. Most guys like yourself, eh. I thought yeah. I was going to come into it with a bunch of just square white boys behind a microphone. <laughs> and I find I got a brother over here who's whooping them up. They don't. Don't know what they're Still doing. Still pulling it after all the watching eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving you guys. And, and you learned about uh, Fifi's today. <laughs> and I'm worried about Fifi's. Right. So I have to talk about that on stage tomorrow. Fifi. Anybody have a Fifi? All right, there here's the deal. So uh, Rick James is playing BB King Blues Club West 42nd between Friday Saturday. and Saturday. Uh, tomorrow and uh, Saturday, yeah. that's right. Uh, the book's coming out, autobiography. Yeah. Uh, and a uh, new record, I don't even know the deal with Well, there's, uh, there's a live album out right now, Street Songs uh, and a uh, double album. Oh, uh, there's a live album, so go out and get that. Okay. That's that right in front of you. Yep. And, um, what else? Well, there's just, uh, there's going to be a bunch of, yeah, there's a Millennium album out. There's a new Mary Jane Girls Greatest Hits out. There's a new Tina Marie out. It's really nice. And we want everybody to come to uh, Peter King's Mountain. We're going to have a serious party for the next Hell oh, yeah. And if you want to come back tomorrow, we're torturing girls. <laughs> and you know what? I like that. He so why not, man? I have a feeling he just might show up tomorrow. Right. Stop by tomorrow, man. I will. As long as I don't have to go back to Folsom. No. no. All right. We'll take the blame. All right. Here's the bell right here. We have got to defecate and do everything on that porch shop. Yeah, we put girls and in. And she's all about, well, I'm just doing it for the money. I need the money. Do you approve of the... Uh, I'll give you 2000 and just stay with me and not get in. She'll go, it was Rick James. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Watch me with the blame. <laughs> Rick James, oh, man. everyone, man.